Hey there folks, Peter here with BlackRock Business and I'm excited that you're at the channel today. In QuickBooks Point of Sale today, I'm going to give you a nice, easy overview of the home screen because maybe you're brand new to Point of Sale and all of these icons are just overwhelming and you're like, what in the world? What's going on here? I don't understand. It's too confusing. There's too many things. I don't know where to go to do what. So we're easily and quickly going to go over them and then you will be oriented and you will know what is going on. Before we do that, I'm going to have a click on the link in the description down below. Get over to our QuickBooks Point of Sale Facebook group where you can ask more specific questions about things you're wondering about. We have a great community where lots of people are answering questions. We have a lot of posts going on every day and it's just a great place. And if you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit subscribe so you get all the best QuickBooks point of sale videos coming at you all the time. Okay, so this is the home screen. All of these icons do things and we are going to go over them now. All right, we're just going to go right through and cover everything. And uh, I, I might mention right off the bat that the main one you're going to go to the most often is the make a sale screen. You'll probably sit on there most of the day on the make a sale screen because hopefully your store is making sales because that's why you have a store so that you can make sales. So that's, that's where you create a receipt. Uh, but let's start in the top here. Customer orders. These are kind of like stretched out sales. You're not going to create a receipt and and the customer is not going to go on their merry way and when you use customer orders here they are a sales order would be something where maybe the the your store doesn't have it in right now um, but it's a little different than a layaway it's it's probably more like a custom order is what I would call it the the customer wants something specific and it might not be something that you normally carry but it's something you can get from your vendor and so you create a sales order and it kicks off uh, a pipeline where you order the product from your vendor and when it gets in the sales order gets fulfilled and the customer picks it up that's probably the best way that i would say a sales order could be described um, you can use the sales order in different ways as well there's, there's always some custom uh, need for a sales order that, you know, I'm not thinking of at the moment. A layaway, I think we all know what a layaway is. I don't know if they're very prevalent anymore, but maybe they are. Maybe your particular store, is, you know, has some hot products that come in and get sold out right away. And, and maybe people put in a layaway to kind of reserve it and because they, they want it before it goes, before it's gone. Or they just want it the next time it shows up. They know that you carry it normally. So a layaway. Yeah, you know how that works. They, they come and pick it up when it gets in. Um, it's a little different than a sales order because uh, it's probably an item you normally carry. Uh, work order is exactly what it sounds like. It would be some products and some labor probably or some customization or something that you're working on for the customer. And so you can add the, the items and products to the work order and then your employee takes care of the work order, gets it done, and then they come and pick it up. So that's awesome. What's a work order? Uh, make a sale. Like I said, you make your receipts there. You check your customer out, print it out. They go on their merry way. It's great. Uh, when you get done with a receipt, all the receipts will hang out in the sales history and you can look at your past receipts there. It's a wonderful historical record where you can look up uh, customers and what they bought and all that kind of stuff. Uh, speaking of customer, you got your customer list here, which is where you should, I, I would, uh, I would recommend that you record customer names and you hopefully get their email as well for future marketing. <clears throat> uh, now you see some arrows on this home screen and they kind of direct you in where the workflows are go so when you make a customer order then it sits in the order list until it either gets closed or the customer comes and picks it up and it gets turned into a receipt because you're checking them out at the end so the order list just holds all of your open and closed i guess uh customer orders that we went over held receipts when you are making a sale you can uh Put the receipt on hold that usually happens when like somebody forgot something and they're going to go back and look some more or 
they're not quite done, so you're halfway through the receipt, but you got to get to your other customers. So one customer leaves and to go do something or get something, and uh, you know you hold the receipt, and then you unhold it later, and you can complete the sale. But in the meantime, you can help other customers. End of day, this is the process where you close up your register, you get all the final counts for the day, uh, you count your cash drawer, and you, you do a Z out, I guess is what they call it, but really it's just a report. So that's what the end of day does. Rewards Manager is for the loyalty program in point of sale where you can set up rules where when customers buy a certain amount, uh, they get a reward, whether it's like 10% off or ten dollars off or or different uh you know they keep coming back for more because you are giving them perks of being a customer uh purchase orders this is the icon that gets used in order to create an order for your vendor so whether you order over the phone order on the internet or you can send them a purchase order maybe through email is very nice this would be facilitated by your purchase order um, if you order over the phone and you order online, you don't have to create a purchase order. And I will mention that purchase orders don't have any bearing on financials. You know, it doesn't get pushed over to your accounting system. It's merely an ordering document. Uh, but it is nice if you can have your vendor receive PDF purchase orders because this facility right here will email it to them. Um, now, instead of going out of order, well, I'm going to jump out of order here because we have a little arrow here. So the PO list is really just where purchase orders hang out until they're closed or received. So you order from your vendor with a purchase order and it sits in the open state right here. This tells me we have five open purchase orders that are should be arriving on our doorstep, hopefully. Uh, so when you order from your vendor and use the purchase order, then you are able to track what has and has not arrived and when it does arrive you are going to do a receiving voucher the receiving voucher uh, takes the information off a purchase order and receives the items into inventory so then you have quantities you know that you can sell and that's how you track your inventory uh, i will mention that if you don't do a purchase order you can just open up a receiving voucher and you can just receive products right in. You can actually create products on the fly on both of these screens. So if you've never had them before, whatever it is, you can create them on these screens. You don't have to res you don't have to create them on the item list. Uh, so if you're doing a receiving voucher and you get interrupted, you can put it on hold. And we have held vouchers here. Uh, or if you're halfway through one and you leave the screen, I believe it automatically puts the receiving voucher on hold. So look out for that. Some people end up with a lot of held receiving vouchers because they forgot they were in the middle of them. So once you receive the entire order into uh, inventory and the quantities are received, then it goes into the receiving history. This is just where you can look up uh, when the last time you received something or anything that you received, all the receiving vouchers will just hang out here that are already done. Item list, this is where all of your inventory, services, group items, assemblies, all of these things hang out in the item list. These are what you add to a receipt to check somebody out. You can have inventory and non-inventory items also. <clears throat> so we kind of covered these first two just because they were attached to the ones above. Vendor list, these are the people that you're ordering products from and uh, that kind of intertwines into most everything here like uh, items have a vendor receiving vouchers are from a vendor you know you're receiving from a vendor so vendor list are the people that you order from and you can keep all of their various um, means of communication in here their email and their and their uh, phone number and all of their info their address or whatever department list uh, this is where you set up different departments in your store and it doesn't have to be you know physical departments that are in different areas of your store what I like to say is make departments that make sense for your reporting uh, you know if you want to differentiate the shoe section from the boot section because you'd like to compare the two in reporting then make them separate but if you just want one big footwear department that's fine too it all depends on you and your store and how granular you want to get how small you want to get 
Um, you know, so if you're a clothing store, you might have shirts, uh, skirts, bottoms, tops, pants. Maybe you want pants to be one department, or maybe you want pants, trousers, jeans, you know, maybe you want to do the reporting separately for each of those. So make departments according to how you want to see your reporting. Clocking, uh, this next whole area here is for employees. We have clocking in and out of the time clock, which flows over to payroll. Uh, you can manage the time clock and clock people out who forgot. You can look at the time clock history, and you can also look at your employee list, which is where you need to create your employees before they can do these other things. So that's all pretty self-explanatory, I believe. And then on the right-hand side, we have operations. So reports is a humongous area where there's all different you know, statistics and reports and numbers that you can look at according to what you want to do a report on. You can pretty much make reports on every section over here if you think about it. Uh, mobile sync, if you have uh, QuickBooks payments and Go payment, you can actually check people out on your phone with uh, any items that you've designated as mobile. So these are the settings for that. I'm on the multi-store section. Um, uh, version here so I have a store exchange area and that is where the multiple stores are exchanging information that's how you set that up uh, financial center is the area where you can look at the settings that have to do with point-of-sale talking to QuickBooks accounting merchant center right here jumps you into your uh, QuickBooks payments online portal where you can uh, check on the transactions, make sure whether they happened or if you need to reverse one manually for some reason, you can do it there. Preferences is a humongous section with all of the numerous little settings for the point of sale. And then getting support down here, you can go ahead and choose to try and get support from Intuit if you'd like. Uh, I Some people, I, I'm not going to badmouth into it, but some people have a hard time understanding the support they get there uh that's i'll leave that at that <laughs> so all right all in all this was a broad overview as quickly as i could of everything that is on the home screen my name's peter with black rock business if this was helpful hit the like button down below and if you have anything to say you can also leave a comment so have a great day Bye bye